Hey YouTubers and welcome back to my YouTube channel Master That English where we understand, analyze and interpret the important texts and concepts that may be part of your English curriculum. Our topic for today is an essay written by the French feminist writer Hélène Sissou which is The Laugh of Medusa. So get your pens and notepads ready cuz here we go. Since time immemorial Women have been at the periphery while men in the center of the universe confined to the four walls of the house while men had explored the world every woman had wondered and hoped for a day when the scales would be equal years of patriarchal domination had reduced the woman into a servile meek shadow of the man with time women have raised their voices on different occasions the social involvement of women led to the first wave of feminism in the early 19th century where women aspired for equal liberal and legal rights which includes the voting rights and the property rights the second wave feminism began in the 1960s and continued for the next two decades This wave propagated the idea of personal is political. The focus was on the reproductive rights and fight against domestic violence and marital rape. One of the pioneers of the second wave was a French feminist writer Hélène Sixou. Now how does Hélène Sixou provide a new approach to women writing? To understand the domains of concern for Elaine Sixou it is important to know the source of her concern The coming of the 20th century brought about a revolution in the field of psychology with the Austrian neurologist Sigmund Freud's concepts who gave a deeper insight into the unconscious part of the mind that was the seat for all human desires What is interesting to note is that the desires of men were given more importance over women. This importance can be understood better in Freud's concept of phallic symbols, where phallic symbols represented the power-driven authority of man, while women were deprived of power symbols constantly. Hence, they always wished for power driven representation and this aspect of phallic symbol didn't just end here because a further evolution of the concept of phallic symbols was carried out by the psychologist Jacques Lacan who believed that the phallic structures was the symbolic realm that can also be situated in the language and that is the reason why Lacan believed that the symbolic structure of language can be interpreted through the principle of binary opposition which was inspired from the structuralist theory and this is what the french feminists aimed to redefine which was the fixed symbolic structure of the psychologists such as lacan which is why the feminist in this period were also called the post structuralists in their approach now the question is why is elaine against the binary structure of symbolic language it is because this binary representation brings a division between men and women where man is represented as the dominating white who controls the recessive woman in black and this is not surprising as man is the creator of this construct and that is the reason why language of society is phallocentric where man has been described by elaine as self admiring self stimulating self congratulatory phallocentricism hence his language is narcissistic as it focuses only on his glorification gratification and domination over the recessive woman 
this recessive trait of a woman has reduced her to a metaphor of the dark continent Africa because she is unexplored and undeveloped which is why Elaine has expressed her sorrow regarding the situation as as soon as they began to speak they are taught their name they can be taught that their territory is black because you are africa you are black so women are trained to be servile and doormats for the man at a very young age she has further elaborated by specifying the three domains of phallocentric control firstly through the culture where women are projected as inferior to man secondly at the social and political domain the concerns of a woman have not been projected from a woman's perspective and lastly at the psychological level where women have always been projected as emotionally weak and that is the reason why women were unable to express their desires in the recessive position but what are the traits that show the recessive position of women the first essential trait is her inability to express her private desires openly without restraint and this has resulted in the prolonged closure of her inner desires so what is the indicator of the repression of her desires well this is because women experience a negative emotion while expressing their inner desires and emotional needs this negative emotion is guilt which is experienced by them whenever they experience those inner desires this experience further aggravates resulting in the feeling of anti-narcissism and self-hate so where is the free expression of women to be seen it is only in the female sex who are outcast of the phallocentric domain these can be categorized into two types the first is the witches and the second are the little girls where witches may allude to the three witches in shakespeare's macbeth who are indifferent to the power representations in the society and are fearlessly able to control a warrior like macbeth and that is because they didn't hesitate to speak their mind fair is foul and foul is fair over through the fog and fill the air <laughs> the second example includes the little girls who have been described as ill-mannered because they have yet not understood the social norms that have been dictated by the phallocentric language so how can women break this phallocentric structure there are two ways of doing this in the first step we need to express the needs of our body without restraint as our honest expression represents the deprived needs of our shadow existence the second important aspect is to adopt the anti logos weapon where instead of writing in the male centric expression which is prose we should adopt the poetic expression which represents the oral tradition of the ancient people this expression has liberated the lovers in expressing their truest feelings for each other and even today the same expression can help us in expressing our needs without the phallocentric constraints that are to be found in the language of prose In this context Elaine Sixou refers to the free spirit of Medusa who according to the Greek mythology was cursed by the goddess Athena who turned her locks into snakes and gave her the fatal gaze that would turn any man 
into stone. Later, the warrior Perseus beheaded her. Even then, the beheaded Medusa refused to give way to the tears, but retaliated by laughing, displaying a free spirit. This is why Elaine Siksu describes Medusa as beautiful, because she is laughing. And following Medusa's example, women should not give in to the feeling of guilt, but must adopt the free spirit of laughter, as laughter provides liberation while expressing the unconscious desires without any reserve. Such unconstrained expressions are like wings that will help you to express your spirit of freedom. Hence, women need to avoid the influence of the male sirens who have been controlling women by the sound of their established traditions since centuries. Elaine elaborates by saying that for men, there are two unrepresentable things. One is death and the other is the feminine sex. Do you know why? Because both death and female sex are forces that are capable of expressing their strengths through their actions. Where death spares nobody. It does not demarcate between a man or a woman. This death also correlates to the fear of castration for man. Man has always wanted to be powerful. And death makes sure that this power dominance doesn't stay there for eternity. On the other hand, man has always been aware of the inner strength of the female sex. And hence, he has tried to keep her subjugated so that he may continue with his patriarchal dominance. That brings us to our next question. If not symbolic, then which realm do women belong to? Well, the answer lies in the expression that Elaine has herself stated, where she states that women's imaginary is inexhaustible. What do you mean by that? This imaginary realm is the pre-linguistic phase where the child only identifies with itself and its desires. And that is because there is no presence of signified in this realm. Hence, women need to focus in their imaginary realm where they need to give themselves liberation from the signified. That is a construct of the patriarchal society. We do not need any sort of boundary to demarcate for ourselves. That is the reason why Elaine Siksu describes the border-free territory of women expression as, when I write, it is everything that we don't know. We can be that is written out of me, without exclusion, without stipulation. And everything will be calls us to be unflagging, intoxicating, unappeasable search for love. Hence, women need to write with the pre-linguistic white ink that is a gift of her mother. And that white ink represents a collective meaning for the female desire. But tell me something, can men also write with this white ink? Yes, they can. In this regard, Elaine provides an example of many male writers. Among them is the example of James Joyce, who is the 20th century writer. And in his work, Ulysses, he has represented the unconstrained desires of a woman with the help of the character Molly Bloom. The lines in front of you are the last words spoken by the character Molly Bloom. What we notice here is that unlike the loyal Penelope from Homer's Ulysses, Molly Bloom expresses her female sensuality and desires without any inhibition. 
letting the reader to take a flight of imagination, wherein multiple interpretations are possible for her desires. Similarly, even the patient Dora from Freud's psychoanalytical study has been referred to as the mistress of signifier, as she does not hesitate to disclose her erotic dreams without any inhibition. Hence the term Iricure Feminine, coined by Eileen Shishu in this work, refers to the multiple possibilities of expressing feminine desires through new meanings and styles. So women can do it by having honest expressions. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. I hope it was empowering to all those women out there. Do subscribe and like the channel if you feel this lecture was enriching. And don't forget to share, because sharing is caring. Until next time, this is me, Karishma, signing off for now. Take care.